recently, I visited the Cobor Ranges in Victoria's Macedon region, home to talented ceramicist Emma Jimson, whose surroundings are a constant source of inspiration. Emma makes a range of stunning homewares and will be making a bowl using one of her techniques, mould making and slip casting. So the idea is we need to start with a model. And a model can be something that you find in nature, like the pomegranates, mm -hmm. or it can be something that you make. So in this case, I thought, I really want a bowl that will be perfect for soup or for breakfast. And so you can make it out of all sorts of things, but this one I made out of MDF. It's beautiful in itself, isn't it? It is. It's a lovely form. Mold making, you need to switch your head around a bit because everything is upside down. It's hard to yeah, visualise. So that's the bowl as it is. So this that's... will be carved out and yep. the spoon goes in here. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. OK, so how do we get from here to here? OK, so we have our model mm -hmm. and we need to build a wall called a cottle, which is going to contain our liquid plaster. And then we pour our liquid plaster mm. over the top of this. Oh, I see. OK. And wait for it to set and off pops our mould. Yeah. So we have a model, we have a mould. Beautiful. And then we have our slip. So this little ring here, where, where does that come into play? So this comes into play, it's called a spare, uh -huh. and it is going to give me a perfect rim. Mm -hmm. OK, so now we're going to make some bowls. Now we're going to make some bowls. So we need to strap on our spare. Mm -hmm. And So we've got our mould, we've got it ready to go, and we have our slip. And a tea strainer, very important. And a tea strainer. <laughs> and the only other thing we need is a timer. Right, got to work quickly. And off we go. So, um, we just want a nice steady pour. So, that one's finished. Okay. We've gone all the way to the top and beyond. Uh -huh. So, the spare we've got here is, is containing the excess, which means that we'll get that beautiful clean rim when we cut it off. So, have a go. It's like making pancakes, pouring perfect batter. It is. Oh, it's a beautiful colour. It must be always so exciting when you open that kiln door to see what you've got. It's really fabulous, because you just don't know what you're going to get. What's the worst thing that ever happened in the kiln? Did it all blow up? I, I did that in the pottery lab at school once. You know, mm. everything blew up. I had an air bubble in mine. Yes. Oh, we've all, had, we've all had something blow up. What's that? Brilliant. That's looking great. Excellent. Porcelain requires um, love and patience and perseverance. I can see that already. It's not, it's not an art form for the people who like instant results. No, there is lots and lots of trials with this material. Um, but what it gives you in the end when it's good is just so good. Yeah. It just keeps you coming back for more. It's a lifelong passion for you, right? Absolutely. Time has gone off right. and it's time to see the emptying of the mould. Okay. Okay. So, up it goes. It's a surprisingly short period of time. It is. Wow, look at that. Emptying you can see the it bowl out. Rim already. And you can see there's the inside yeah. of our finished piece. Of course, the outside is touching the plaster mould. On I've it. never seen this being done. This is so cool. After it's drained and, and got most of its drips out, we then set it upside down on a 45. Oh, okay. And leave it for about 10 minutes to firm up. That's what so they're for. I wonder what they're for. That's what they're for. So, okay. prop it up on there. Going to have a go? Have a go. Any special tips? No special tips. You're just trying to go for a steady, gradual pour. Exactly like that. And then you're going to leave it at that 45 degree angle and pop it on the blocks over there so that it can continue to drain. Look, it's delicate, but it's actually quite strong, isn't it? That's it. Is it. That's it. So the process is we'll shape the rims, mm -hmm. we'll clean it up and it needs to dry fully. It's going to take a couple of days to, to dry. The slower the better in this process. Uh, once it's gone through and, and had all of the water driven off it, we call it bone dry, it'll get to this feel. Incredibly brittle at this stage, but this is now ready to go into the kiln for its first firing. We call it a bisque firing. Mm. It takes it up to a thousand degrees. Yeah. It comes out of the kiln, we prep it, we glaze it, and it goes back in and it goes up to 1280. And it comes out utterly transformed into a functional, amazing piece.